All right, welcome everyone. This is ESL One Katavisa 2018, powered by Intel. This is the South American closed qualifiers. We got Team South and Gorillas Pride. They played actually just the other day, and they're back for the grudge match. I'm really excited about this. I'm your caster, Moxie. I'm joined by Forge Dota, and uh, here we are. We're already into the draft, and it looks like we see an early Enigma ban. I think this is some kind of like target ban or something like team south has to have something in mind because enigma is not a hero that's very popular in the meta right now it's pretty easy for most of the uh popular cores to clear out his his eidolons and the jungle just got absolutely destroyed so i'm assuming team south has some kind of strategy in mind that enigma must counter and uh so they just opt to ban that right out the legion commander i think making a little bit more sense in the last two games that um these teams did play gorilla's pride did pick it up both games so a uh, bit of a target ban there. And same for the uh, Clockwork and the Enchantress, both just very strong right now, as well as getting picked up in the uh, previous match. And definitely, you know, Night Stalker provides just such great vision. Uh, oh boy, but they let the Omni Knight through. So that could be a huge problem, actually, for Gorilla's Pride. This year is very, very strong. It does have uh, quite a few counters still left in the pool, ways that you can uh, go ahead and purge off the Guardian Angel, but it's definitely... You have to start to draft around the Omni Knight just a little bit here because he is so very strong. Yeah, I think we're going to probably see the Brewmaster get picked up. He's the easiest counter in the game uh, with the... There it is. And there it is right there. <laughs> it's just such an easy counter as an offlaner. You just have the Storm Panda with the Mass Dispel get rid of the Guardian Angel, which is the biggest problem for the Omni Knight. Aside from the changes to his laning phase, and just how strong he is there. The fact that Diffusal Blade got nerfed and most of the purges in the game got completely removed. Uh, I mean, Omni Knight is just so incredibly strong. So uh, pretty easy pickup for Gorilla's Pride to grab that Brewmaster. And the Tusk, I mean, probably one of the most popular supports in, in the South American region, I would say. Every time uh, we come down to South America, it feels like Tusk gets seen very strong against the Omni Knight as well. You can't repel off Ice Shards. You're still going to get blocked in there. Uh, so very strong support to deal with that pesky, pesky offlaner. Well, I think it's not just in the South American region. Tusk is just very, very strong right now as a roaming position for currently anyways with the, uh, you know, like you said, with the Shards. Shards actually getting a little bit of a rework. Um, but we've seen a lot of this hero actually across the, uh, across the region. So definitely makes sense. They'd want to pick him up. He also provides a nice save if necessary. But the Shadow Fiend pickup here from Team South, that's another hero we've been seeing more and more. If you actually played it the other day uh, against Gorillas as well. So Yeah, they, they did have the Clockwork that time though, so they had uh, the very easy start for the Shadow Fiend. So very smart of Gorillas Pride to uh, ban that out uh, and just kind of secure that. I mean, just, Clockwork Shadow Fiend is just such an old school, like pseudo cheese strat because it in ensures that you always have souls to start with which is shadow fiend's biggest problem it gives you a huge advantage in the lane and uh we'll see what they kind of ban out here because this is a very early shadow fiend pick and last time they picked it up this early uh they very quickly banned out a lot of heroes that are good against the shadow fiend we saw the quap get banned out as well and there it is right there so they're trying to secure this shadow fiend lane as hard as they can well, they're definitely going to send someone over, I think, to babysit him, especially with a roaming tusk on the map. I think that could end up being a big problem because the best way to shut down a Shadow Fiend is to shut down his lane real early and make him uh, force him off into the jungle to try to catch up. So, be interested to see what else they decide to pick up here. You know, we've seen a lot of Bane in the past when we were doing Genting. They like to send that hero over and just harass Nightmare, whoever the mid laner is. Uh, or, you know, of course, Ogre Magi has been very, very popular as well with the Ignite being just very tanky. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see what Team South decides they want to pick up. I mean, looking at their uh, their former picks, they're already pretty much banned out for their uh, their position for, you know, the Enchantress got banned out. And uh, what did they have last time? Was it was it the clock position for, like you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, it was the game. Game one was they opened with the, the clock Shadow Fiend and then banned out the uh, TA and the Co-op like they did here. So without the clockwork, it does make the laning phase a little bit harder for the Shadow Fiend because you don't get those early souls. But like you said, there's still the Ogre Magi with the uh, Bloodlust, with the Ignite. You still have the Bane. You could even grab something like the Io, just kind of sit back, make him very tanky. 
Mm, I don't like the IO. Hard to harass out. I don't like the IO with the no. Not a big fan of that. I think it's just gonna be too yeah. too squishy and it might be a little bit too greedy here, so I I mean that's that's completely reasonable. Just think just try to think of uh supports that can just sit behind Shadow Fiend and in his landing phase. But you're right, it's probably a little bit greedy with the Omni Knight already. But uh looks like we've seen TA taken out, the Husker was taken out earlier as well, so Gorilla's trying to figure out exactly what they would like to see. They've got the Brewmaster, which is probably going to be popped over into that offlane. Tusk roaming four. Would think... Yeah, there's the Wyvern. They uh, they like Winter Wyvern. Played it a couple times this month on this patch already. A little bit weaker than she was before because her Q doesn't quite do as much damage now. Uh, still pretty good, though, against like a Shadow Fiend who's dumping out a lot of physical damage. Uh, not so it's... good, though, with a heal. Can get nuked down. Yeah, it's a little scary against Shadow Fiend because while you do counter out the heavy physical, it's also super easy setup for a triple raise. And with the new stacking damage you get from raise, even the, the regen that you get in the spaces while he has to kind of readjust, I don't think quite counters out how much, just quite how much damage you get from that. So a little bit scary, but uh, still a decent pick. And with any kind of uh, you know Omni Knight or anything else like that, if you can turn his own team against him before he gets off something like the Guardian Angel, then, uh, I mean, just very strong hero. Well, here comes the question. So Winter Wyvern, you know, has a really nice ulti, but has a lot of trouble with mobility. So is this going to be one of those situations where, you know, we see them try to pick up? I know a lot of the times I've seen Winter Wyverns, if they're lucky and they have enough money, they pick up a Blank Dagger fairly early or Force Taff. Uh, or do they get rolled in by Tusk? I mean, rolled in by Tusk is scary. But if you are going to very quickly follow that up, and they, I mean, the, the big thing is that Team South is going to have to be spread very far. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure that you're not getting more than two or three heroes in there. Because even if, like, let's say Shadow Fiend and Omni Knight are the ones that get Winter's Cursed, if the rest of the team is behind there, you roll in with the two supports, you throw a Witch Doctor cask in there, and while those two cores are beating the crap out of each other, there's just going to be a paralyzing cask with a Maledict and an ulti on top, and you might trade favorably with one to two, but you're losing, you know, they might kill a core, but they're going to lose two supports while they're at it. Oh, so this the is trades a, aren't going to be there. This is a gross lane now for Shadow Fiend if he's going over to mid. Having to deal with a Viper early on is going to be really difficult to deal with. Yeah, that's a, that's a hero that a lot of people thought you know, oh man, his laning phase got changed because you can't just spam poison attack. But poison attack, I think, is stronger than it used to be. And the ability to now push out waves with uh, the nether toxin rework is very, very strong. And with any kind of support from the tusk, the shadow fiend is going to have to be really scared. We might even see something uh, like the safe lane shadow fiend. We saw that a couple of times at the recent Captain's Draft tournament where they would pick an early shadow fiend. And then if the lane didn't look good, they would just send him to the safe lane and pick up a supplementary uh, mid who could maybe lane better against the, the Viper. So that is still kind of a possibility. I'll be interested to see if they continue to keep that Shadow Fiend into the uh, mid lane or they move him off to the safe. Um, trying to look at this draft here and see what would work really well. The Viper, again, going to be a bit of a problem, but there are ways to work around it. What are they going to go for the, uh, the hard carry here, the position one on Gorillas? That is my question as well. Well, they have a lot of magic damage right now, so they need somebody who... I mean, Deuce is still in the pump. pool. Deuce is still pretty strong, honestly. They could pick up a uh, a tiny, potentially, because they'll I have mean, the Viper that's doing a lot of work in space with Brewmaster. I, I think Tiny could be pretty good, um, because he's going to... I'm not sure quite exactly how status resistance uh, affects Corrosive Haze. That's a very... That's an interaction I've not really seen. Uh, but if that does work like the rest of status resistance works, could be very good to kind of deal with the Slardar. The chain stunning wouldn't be quite as strong. I think the Witch Doctor would be the biggest problem for that, as well as uh, Maledict still being very strong. Right, well, moment of truth here for the side of Team South. Are they going to decide if they want to keep that Shadow Fiend mid or if they're going to move him to safe? Uh, they do have that Slardar pick up. I mean, I hear, hmm. Could see something like the Life Stealer here. Does I don't like the Life Stealer here, really. I mean, they they do have a vehicle. They've got the Slardar, but I don't know. That's a lot of eggs in one basket to like 
rely on him getting a really good crush because he's going to have to be very active early or else Slarder just kind of doesn't do quite as much as he'd like. It's true. Something like a Luna could be good as well. Would give them a nice mix between the early magic damage and the uh, later scaling physical, especially with the Slarder running around, getting stuns. Would give their team fight a huge bust as well. I think Luna would be a pretty good pickup for Team South if they want to run that. Well, that's nice too because if you pick up the Luna, then you'll also have uh, you know the Repel coming out from the Omni Knight, which is something that Luna really is it's really likes to pick up. Uh, they go with a Timber Saw though. Okay. I did not see that coming. <laughs> so, it's not entirely unlikely that this is a safe lane Omni Knight, and they just run the Timber Saw up against the Brewmaster because Timber Saw he's going to just farm with his uh, his Q anyway. They're just going to match up the Timber Saw against the uh, Brew, leave the Omni Knight, I guess, with the Juggernaut. This will be an interesting laning phase for sure. Definitely a little bit more of a traditional draft coming out here from Gorillas. Obviously, going to send uh, Chris Brown mid on that Viper. Jug uh, is pretty good here, too, as well. Just being able to spin and get away from uh, some of these stuns getting thrown out. You do see the cask running right at your face half the time. But uh, this will be this will be pretty interesting. Which draft do you like, Forge? Because I like Gorillas right now. I like the... I li I, I'm going to agree with you. I think Gorillas has a bit of the stronger draft. The Juggernaut, a little bit more of a conventional carry. But even if they are running the Omni Knight as a core, uh, Omni Knight has uh, huge mobility issues, kind of a slower hero. And Juggernaut, very easily going to grab the Manta Style to get rid of the uh, Cross of Haze. Has the spin, like you said, to get away from the, the Witch Doctor cast. And I think it's just going to scale a lot better. I, I, I'm going to go with the Gorillas draft. The Team South draft is just a little too unconventional but you know they might make it work though team south kind of like the uh i don't want to say the dark horse but the unexpected team i suppose where they just they're brand new there's like no info on these guys and they uh they won against gorillas yesterday they too owed them so you never yeah, know here. certainly a possibility for the draft to work i mean brewmaster is going to just melt to this timber saw and as long as they get a decent cask into Slarder Stun off, then Timbersaw will have more than enough time to just absolutely destroy that Brewmaster. So it could work. I'm just a little bit worried about what uh, capacity this Omni Knight's going to get run in and, and how well they're going to do against this Jug, who was a very good last pick from Gorillas. In typical fashion, we have our uh, traditional pause right at the very beginning here. Like we're just yeah, it gives running. us a time to kind of look around and see what we're working with here. A lot of these, not a, a lot of these uh, players haven't grabbed their items yet, though, so it makes it hard. Oh yeah, they just literally, first on the Night. literally loaded in here. So looks like uh, Chile Favore is gonna have to reconnect for a minute here. Let's take a look. Curry, we got the uh, the noble steed, the donkey over here on the side of the radiant. And uh, for G Pride, what do we have? Oh, we've is got that... the uh, the wizard. <laughs> yeah, is that Crummy Wizard? That is Crummy Wizard. I think it's Crummy Wizard, yeah. All right, so so far in the game of Couriers, I would say G Pride winning here. My camera's bugged right now because we're on a weird pause, and so it keeps like zooming in super duper close or super, super far out. So that's fun. Nice up close and personal here with the uh, giant winter wyvern who's just loading into the game. Now we're just missing. Thing, Mr. Seven on the Brewmaster. Yeah, it looks like he's gonna reconnect as well here. Oh no, we lost Winter Wyvern now. All right, we're losing <laughs> everyone. Oh no, G Pride, come back! So the real question is, where do you think we're seeing first blood? Because my th my thought is mid. I think 100% we're seeing this in mid. The Shadow Fiend is going to die to a tusk roll in or a tusk shards with the viper just pounding away i think whoever you send mid really it's, it's gonna have a really difficult time dealing with tusk roaming and the viper just spitting at you constantly um i would say mid is probably the most likely place although i don't know if they're going to maybe smoke and go for a first blood and contest rooms that's also possible they've got pretty good level one with the uh, wyvern having the slow uh obviously you know viper shards coming off a of tusk and uh Spin to win and all that fun stuff. Whereas on the side of South, not quite as good level one here. Um, you know, they've got the uh, the Castle come out from Witch Doctor for all grouped up. 
Slarder obviously can get his uh, his stun off, but a little bit less in terms of slow coming out from the side of South here. I would like to see, like, I'm really interested to see how this draft is going to come out here from South. I yeah, I think the most interesting thing is that, like, the the Viper versus Timbersaw matchup is kind of neat because early game, Timbersaw lives at around, like, 25% HP, right? He, he stacks up a bunch of reactive, dives, towers, and just does, like, super crazy aggressive stuff. So an early rotation from Viper on the Timbersaw and a couple of poison attacks, the change to poison attack means that it deals damage based on how much HP you're missing. So if Timbersaw is not careful, a good rotation from the Viper could quickly turn around any kind of divey shenanigans that uh, he might like to go for. Mm. Well, it's very hard to gank a Viper early on. Like, that's I don't think that's going to be one of their prime targets that they go after. If anything, I think they're going to probably try to put a lot of pressure onto this Brewmaster if possible. Because Brewmaster not really great at catching up if he gets far behind. And he doesn't have the best escape either, so... Eyes over on I 7 mean, he, here. He has split, but if he doesn't get that... Well, not, not early on. <laughs> oh, yeah, early I'm on. I'm talking about laning. Got... Laning phase, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, laning phase, yeah. Okay, I see what you're getting at. Laning phase, he's got to be careful about his positioning, especially, you know, with... Uh, with being around creeps and stuns and such. And... Uh, you know, other stuns coming out from Slardar on Bandy here. Bandy Inverse. So I think the only one that's not... I think two of these guys aren't showing up as their uh, names that they had officially listed on the side of South, right? I think we're missing Alesha, which is... I'm going to guess is Juanico Tutero. And uh, Un Simple Tutero, I think, is Un Simple Cachero. I think they just changed... You changed that? Okay. Well, since this is a uh, newer team anyway, not a whole lot of info to go off, so names not... I'm going to do my best, guys. because I know, yes. like, uh, Simple and and uh, Bandy are... That's got to be Alesha. That's got to be Alesha on the Witch Doctor. And I'm pretty sure that's the... Uh, their position three. Gorillas, we've got, uh, obviously... Sexy Man on one, Chris Brown on two, Moger over here on four, Lucy going to be on the five, and so stand in seven. I'm not sure if that's... Uh, yesterday, it was just someone with a smiley face, <laughs> so I'm, I'm pretty sure it's probably the same person since it is running it as a three, but... Yeah, I mean, they, they banned out the Legion, so I'm assuming that Team South knows that that's the same person, because... Grails probably did grab the Legion both mm -hmm. games. So oh, yeah. First ban yeah. made, made a lot of sense. And that uh, that game yesterday, I'm surprised um, that there was no Batrider banned out in this this draft because... Yeah, the they had 9-0 and 19 on Team South. Oof. Like, like absolutely terrifying performance on that Batrider. Yeah, that's a bad out of hell right there. Definitely. Ha <laughs> ha! See what you've done. Sometimes I have yokes. <laughs> but yeah, still waiting for uh for Brewmaster to reconnect, otherwise they're just gonna have to start without him, unfortunately. Which that is not how be... you want to start it off. No, that would be unfortunate for G Prad. Not the start they're looking for. They are the ones that need to get their revenge back, so I'm sure they're anxious to I mean show us what they got. I think they're starting off with a nice strong draft here, so that'll help. But again, you don't want to start without your, your offlaner. It's pretty important that he gets down to the ways. I'm sure they just micro him down just so he can at least get the uh, experience, but someone's going to have to keep an eye on him, probably position five. Do some microing. Just grab somebody who plays whoever their enchantress player is. Just play <laughs> Brewmaster like a creep. Yeah, there you go. Fine. Right, right. Just get those so levels at the very least. That's how it works. I'm still so bummed that the winter terrain actually is no longer a thing. Not that I use it during cast, but I felt like we had it for like five days and then it was gone. Yeah. Or something it to was, that effect. It was short lived this team. I mean, the, the removal, or I mean, not necessarily removal, but the lack of battle passes has kind of changed the cosmetics this year because before you'd get these terrains and you'd be like, okay, as long as the battle passes around, you know the terrains are going to be there, but. 
now everything's a little less straightforward in that regard. And I like the little details, like you would see like the the creeps, you would see their breath fog up as they were walking down the lane. Oh such. yeah, yeah, absolutely. The little details are what make it really nice. It's like Mogur is just ready to go. He's tired of waiting to get the show on the road, even though it's his own uh his own teammate own that's team. not that's not there. But yeah. He he's anxious to show us what he's got, Proxy. Well, we're definitely anxious to see what he's gonna bring. You know, it's funny though, we spent the, uh, for those of you who didn't know, uh, the captain's draft was occurring down in DC and both Forge and I went and attended, but it's, it's kind of funny cause we're looking at these picks now. We're like, oh man, this seems weird. We don't see any like weird picks for a change. You know, a couple There's of games. There's no Meepo. Teddies, Meepo. Yeah. That Meepo game. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That was, I mean, I had this conversation with a few of the other people that I went with, like they were like, oh my God, like Meepo is so good now. And all the rest of it, I'm like, no, Meepo's not good now. It's just that it's such a weird tournament that it's the only time you can pick Meepo and it be that successful. Because otherwise, in Captain's mode, there's all these heroes that just slow him down. And with the changes to the jungle, it's just such a such a hard hero to get. I don't know. My favorite is still, uh, <laughs> still the rest of when you went and you uh, had your conversation with with Jack about, you know, is uh, is Invoker good? Is Kunk uh, mid viable? And he just <laughs> shut you down. Oh boy, was I glad to hear that. <laughs> okay, so I had a conversation with Trent Pax first, and okay, Trent was okay. like, yeah, no, totally. Kunk Didn't Kunk Trent totally... end the bottom of the, uh, <laughs> the prediction points and stuff, though, too? I well, love you, Trent, but. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> don't encourage the... Kunk mid for Forge. Please don't. <laughs> here's the thing. I was misled. That's not my fault. I asked a question, and I was very quickly corrected by both uh, Jack and a few of the other attendees of the tournament who were like, "Yeah, no, don't, don't do that." I also, <laughs> while I was there, learned that don't ask Dota questions while Kyle from Complexity is dancing because he will just smile at you and then dance away. That means sometimes a man's just got to dance for it. <laughs> Looks like we can't pause any longer, though, here in the game. So uh, hopefully Brewmaster, you know, hopefully he figures it out and gets back. But uh, we do have to start here. So yeah. it looks like we are going to get underway. Hopefully they can mic the room. I mean, getting back into the game, clicking around at what people have queued up. Nothing really too unorthodox. We're just spamming go the entire time. <laughs> Nothing too unorthodox with the Shadow Fiend. He's got the Fairy Fire for a nice burst regen. But an item that's queued up on uh, the Omni Knight that has made a bit of a resurgence recently is the drums. You know, a, a few months ago, drums was like the least picked up item in Dota. It was absolutely awful. Nobody wanted it. But with this meta evolving into this like always fighting you know early aggression trying to end the game these early push strats drums is becoming extraordinarily valuable and we'll see teams sometimes grab like two or three heroes that have these drums just to get as many as, as much use as the charges as you can and uh, especially the, uh, the early stats are very nice what was the game it was um a razor versus i want to say it wasn't a Pugna, right? There was one of the games at Captain's Draft. We saw like there was a Razor who's already known for being very, very speedy, and the other person that he was against. They both went for drums. Was it? <sighs> for life of me, I cannot remember. We can't pause. What's up? Yeah, they're out of pauses at this point. It's like they're still trying to figure out. I think you just have your wyvern micro the brew because I think it's more important to get the levels there. I don't know. <laughs> I they're like how they give him the ward. Like, don't worry, he'll be back soon. Uh, so I hope that something changes for or Mr. Brewmaster because right now he has ten gold. Wait, what? And I, I hope. Yeah. Oh boy. So I hope that when he reconnects, he gets his gold back. Because otherwise, this is going to be a rough, rough start for Mr. Stone. I mean, it's already a rough start because he's going to miss the first creep wave at the very, very minimum here without being able to do much of anything. But they do invade the jungle over here. Looks like they're going to fight off here at the Timber Saw. Be able to secure that bounty rune for Mogur. And uh, no one blocking, though, over here for the side of gorillas. So 
they should have a pretty nice, pretty decent block for the Shadow Fiend to get started. This is definitely what Jide wants here. Being able They're to. They're gonna get a nice block though. <laughs> and Brewmaster. I I'm trying to figure out who's microing him, to be honest with you. That's what I'm, I'm most... not sure if you can find that out, right? It looks like maybe well, no. Mogar? Mogar is just standing still here and the Brewmaster is running around, so possibly that's the case. Yeah. But, uh... I mean, they could alternate duties as well. They could be like both of them trying to do it. But, I mean, whoever it is is going to be at a disadvantage, which is why I'm trying to figure it out. Again, I think you would probably want to send the Wyvern to uh, to do the microwing if they're comfortable with it anyways. But a uh, nice start off here over for the side of uh, Team South. Shadow Fiend, uh, pretty comfortable here being able to hit here onto the high ground. Looks like Chris Brown not going to be able to quite get over there as easily. And they do have the Witch Doctor standing nearby to provide support. Does have a point in that cask. And depending on how aggressive, of course, the Viper gets, I'm sure we'll see a point in that Voodoo Restoration just in case. But, uh... Yeah, and this is one of those lanes where, I mean, Viper can easily, easily kill the Shadow Fiend if he gets out of position. But as long as uh, Shadow Fiend stays, you know, as far back as he can and doesn't really get roamed on by the Tusk, I think that's the key part. The Shadow Fiend can actually very easily zone out the... Uh, Viper just with spamming down the raises and the massive amount of damage he gets from Necromastery. Uh, looks like they're going to throw out a bit of damage here over onto the Shadow Fiend. We do have uh, Brewmaster has reconnected, so that's good. He'll be able to jump back in. And now here comes the pressure because they rotated this Wyvern to kind of put a lot of pressure over onto the Shadow Fiend. And of course, you've got the Witch Doctor, which is good if they're grouped up to kind of st stun them, get them out of the way. But now that Tusk is free and he doesn't have to sit there farming in lane, I think this is going to make life a lot harder for Cheetah here. Well, the, the yeah, the biggest problem I think you know, on top of that is that he's only just now getting his regen and items, and he's level one to the level three timber saw. So while this does free up the tusk, the brewmaster I think is still going to have to be babysit in order to be effective in this game because he's two levels behind a hero that can very easily burst him down. It'll be interesting to see how they try to uh, deal with all this if they try to put. It's hard. It's it's again. It's a timber saw. It's not a hero that's easy oh, to yank yeah, down. Yeah. Shadow Fiend over to mid, and that's what we talked about, right? Looks like First Blood's going to be Cheetah. It's going to go over to the side of Chris Brown. Yeah. So, a very easy roll in from uh, Mogur there. Just wraps around from behind. Shadow Fiend was being very aggressive in the river because the Brewmaster re was disconnected. He could he could be that aggressive, but nice rotation from Tusk. And he's actually looking to maybe set up on the Omni Knight top. They do ping out, though, that he's standing over there, so... Let's see what happens. Omni Knight, of course, you know, he doesn't have any points in Repel, so this could actually be a very big kill for them. There's the Tusk coming forward here. Mogur will just get a couple clicks off. There's out the shards. They'll pop the Arctic Burn over onto the Winter Wyvern. Big heal coming out, and they'll be followed up with Bandy coming up to save the day. We'll be able to land that stun over onto Usi, and he needs to be really, really careful here. Does throw out the Splinter Blast. Ah, is he going to be able to get away? Oh, the Slardar is really looking. Yeah, they'll be able to do a nice... Purification over onto the uh, slider, but it looks like he's gonna pay for it with his life. Dandy trying to get out, but shards, they just trap him in. Very nice rotation from the slider to get that kill, but I mean, shards and is just so strong against the Omni Knight. No level can repel just yet because he knows there's not really that much of a point. And they do manage to get the chase down with the Degen Aura, which is gonna hurt Wyvern a lot because he's already so incredibly slow. And you're going to throw two points of degen on top of that, but spin to win is the name of More the game. More harass for... coming out over here onto Chide again. See the Wyvern getting into position and a little bit of a chase coming out. Get another pause, this time coming out from the side of uh, Team South. Yeah, they, they're going to need a second. And they, they still have a bit of pause time to work with, which is good for them. A little bit of lag. This is a bit of a problem, though. The Shadow Fiend is just constantly getting harassed by, you know, the right clicks coming out from the Viper. Winter Wyvern has made a rotation. So has the Tusk. And they know that he's standing nearby. They have a nice board. They'll actually snowball themselves in immediately. Follow up with the shards. They're going to trap both of them here into the corner. Mogur needs to be careful. He's taking a lot of damage. They will be able to rotate and get a kill over onto the Winter Wyvern. Mogur just running for his life here. There's one more tick. I'm not sure. Might be able to just make it. Yeah, and he does have a solve. Oh, he actually he tries to DP out. Will He'll get cancelled out by Bandy and he'll get that kill. I think if he pops that salve after the last tick and just runs, I think he would have made it out. That was an ambitious TP. I don't know if he knew that Slardar was that close.
close. I don't know if he used, if he thought that Slaughter had kind of tapered off. But that was an ambitious TP from Tus, which is kind of rough because now he has to walk back. Uh, no real easy, easy setup. But this Shadow Fiend, like he said, is having a very rough time. Constantly sitting at like half HP. He's just got back to the lane. He's already at half HP. And he's got a bottle queued up, but I honestly think he might be better off just grabbing mass amounts of tangos, mass amounts of salves. Because for the man, the mo money you're spending on bottle, it's not it's not doing enough to keep you in lane. You have three charges against a Viper who's just going to, like in three auto attacks, do more damage than you've healed. So still no points in Repel here on this Omni Knight. Although bottom lane, oh, I was just looking at that. This Timbersaw is having a great time CSing. He just hit his level six. Sitting at 35 and seven. Top lane, it looks like they're gonna jump over onto Omni. Again, he does not have Repel. So they're just gonna go spin around over onto him, throw out the snowball and they won't be able to clean up. Wyvern gonna be the one who gets that kill. Smoked up over here into the mid lane, looks like the Witch Doctor and Slardar. They're looking to get this gank off over onto Chris Pound. We'll be able to land the cast follow up with the Maledict. Big stuff and oh, he's gonna walk away from this. No, they, they started to turn around. Looks like uh, Witch Doctor now in for a little bit of trouble. That Splinter Blast doing a lot of damage. They should be able to get this kill. They do land that stun though over onto Shadow Fiend. He doesn't really have enough mana for the raise. We'll try to bottle himself through and they will be able to turn back around over onto the Wyvern. That was really, really well executed gank there. They do get the turnaround kill on Witch Doctor, but two for one in the lane that Shadow Fiend is losing, losing is absolutely uh, worth it. Well, I got concerned because I think they figured that that last hit coming out from Shadow Feed would be enough damage, but for some reason, I think he was on the low ground there. It ended up missing, and so Viper was still alive, didn't nuke him down quite fast enough, and he had that wand. So for like a split second, I thought maybe, but then the rest of the team showed up and ensured that they yeah. got that kill. Yeah, no, he, he backed Bottom up. Bottom lane, oh no, Brewmaster is in so much trouble here. He gets just hit by, of course, Lardar and the Timber Saw throwing out that Chakram. Yeah, this is, I mean, the early lane, uh, the early disconnect was very unfortunate for Primaster because he's leveling very well now, right? He's level five, but he's still two levels behind the Timber Saw. And, and every Timber's time... farmed. Like, he's got his arcane boots already. He's got he's the Void Stone. Stone. Yeah, because he knows that he he can get away with being greedy like this. There's... Yeah, he gets an early Bloodstone, and, you know, can, if he can keep up this kind of momentum, he's got 50 last hits on top of. He's the top two in CS he's right got. now. Not something that you normally see from the timber saw, but the safe lane timber is working out very well. Brewmaster still does not have that six. Oh, they are gonna dive this tower. They see that he's weak. He just stands there. It looks like he's not gonna be able to get away from this and accepts his fate. Could be a little bit of lag too. I know he was having some connectivity issues earlier on, but uh, still just trying to delay that six as much as possible and take advantage of the fact that he's struggling here. Yeah, and this is one of the things that's kind of unfortunate about just constantly ganking a Shadow Fiend, it gets a little predictable, right? Like both of the supports are just sitting mid and if you don't see They if, can't if they can't go back to lane here. Forge, our brewmaster just he's, 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 he's just accepted his fate. He's yeah. so sad. He can't go back to this lane. They're just gonna dive him every right. single time. And you don't want to give a lot of kills over to this uh, timber saw. Jumping over into the trees, though, looks like they're chasing after Winter Wyvern. Maybe a little bit too far here, Wu. Uh, trying to just duke himself around in the trees. He's not making it out. That is oh, very, nice, very scary uh, right now. Yeah, they don't have enough mana to get the uh, purification, but that's a lot of space. Right? Looking on the bright side. Oh, it looks like Chide actually gets taken down. Uh, by this viper they get a return kill though but they'll also fall jeez that's a lot of action going on here in this mid lane yeah they're i mean they're just gonna the same way that the brewmaster is gonna get constantly pressured Bandy. It's gonna be this oh he dodges with the snowball we'll be able to just push him back throw out a right click and say not today slardar yeah the, the same way that the brewmaster is gonna get just constantly roamed on it's gonna be the same for the shadow fiend the big difference though is that shadow fiend with a couple of stacks and a good team fight with with Requiem can very easily come back. Whereas Brewmaster, I mean, yeah, he's got split up now, so it's a little bit harder to kill him. He feels a bit more comfortable in this lane, but you've got a Timbersaw diving tier twos, and yeah, you can use split to live, but you're not going to get a kill with that. And the, the recovery farm is just not going to be there for Brewmaster, so 
the pressure definitely on the side of uh, Team Gorillas right now. And we're seeing that Team South actually kind of, it's plateaued a little bit, about a 4k team net worth lead. Uh, only about a 2,000 lead in experience, but uh, we do see all oh, the smoke actually pops. They spot him out over here. They will grab the Witch Doctor. Cass gets thrown out, gets a couple bounces, but they'll turn back around. There's nothing that this poor little doctor can do other than call an ambulance for his poor corpse. They, they smoked up, but unfortunately, there they was a really, really well-placed ward from the Tusk here who spotted out the like, super deep ward and who spotted out the smoke. So they just kind of set a trap. You have the Wyvern on the high ground where they assume the smoke's going to pop. And then uh, a sentry ward waiting there. Tusk hiding in the trees and a simple shards block secures the kill. The Spearmaster is just trying to get though. whatever they can get out of this lane, and unfortunately it's not very much. He's currently sitting very third lowest in terms of net worth. Yeah, Jump over, they find themselves a Slardar though. He was trying to farm up his uh, Blink Dagger, but that really deep ward paying off, and I'm wondering if they're going to be able to bot this out. There's a, sentry, there's a sentry ward on the Witch Doctor, but... Guess oh boy, Omni, Omni Knight, he's got the purification though. He's putting a lot of damage over onto Mogur. Mogur gonna try to hide himself around into the trees. Witch Doctor comes forward. They do get the kill over onto the Wyvern and they still have their eyes over onto Mogur here. It's just literally Witch Doctor chasing him around at this moment. Uh, if they can get a purification off the over onto Mogur, this could be pretty good. Does not have a TP. The tower does go down. Shards come out and unfortunately <laughs> trap him to his death here. Okay, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Timber's saw is just... Not a care in the world. Forces out the shrine bottom. Forces the rotation from the wyvern. He hasn't had to leave this lane at all, Forge. And I mean, this is a timber saw, and he's taken two towers by himself. That's a problem. And, and he's got a 12 minute bloodstone. That is insane timing. He's going to join these fights now, and they've Smoke. already been able to get a lot of kills. I think Juggernaut definitely the the biggest problem for. Uh, this is a dead boom. Chris Brown, I think. Jump forward, follow up with the cast, raise. Timber Saw throws out the Chakram as well. And, and he gets that kill. Bloodstone charge. Is this where we take bets how many Bloodstone charges we think we're going to see Blank have? Um, I'm, I'm going to say around 30. 30? Oh, I don't know yeah. about 30. I was going to say like I mean, maybe 20, low 20s. Although he's, he's got go. his eyes over onto this wyvern, actually going to fly up over onto the cliff. They still have vision over on though, and they will try to go ahead, jump over that eye spot as uh, Wusi tries to run himself away here. Timber, oh, the tree's breaking. <laughs> not going to be he able to get this. that chain. He wants wyvern. He's going to go in deep, but uh, since that chain did not connect, I think he'll back off. The spinning yo-yo of death will allow the wyvern to live for a change. I... Uh... I think that that was intentional by Woosie. Like, I think he was watching oh, yeah. his Arctic Burn timer and trying to bait out the Timber Chain so he could live there. So, well played by him. This is giving uh, a little bit of space to Seven, who's trying to get, like, a Soul Ring going online. And I think the biggest uh, benefit for Team Grails right now is that Jug's been left pretty much to free farm. Omni Knight's been dying a bit. Uh, and, I mean, Jug's just trying to recover farm as best he can. He's got the Yash online. Now he's going back for the Battle Fury afterwards just trying to get as massive as he can my worry is that even if he gets absolutely massive he, he's going to be at the top and they're just going to kill everyone around him first oh boy so it a little bit on that but mogra now in a little bit of trouble throws out the shards timber doesn't seem to really care about it though we'll be able to just clean up and add another charge onto that bloodstone up to 16 now and he's going immediately for the eggs. No tank ability. He's not worried about dying. He just wants he's to dish top of the net worth right now, too. Like, this guy has just done whatever he wants in that bottom lane. Needs to be careful, though. We'll run face-to-face -face with Jug. Looks like Sexy Man wants nothing to do with it, though. We'll run himself back. And uh, Wyvern has to be very careful as well. The burst damage that Timber can put out would be a huge problem as he makes his way now to the top lane. Starts tanking he's that tower. Doesn't even care. You saw for a second there too, he saw the Wyvern and like he went over and he's like, nah, I'll just get the tower. Like he wanted to go for the kill. Well, when your Jug but... runs away and I'm assuming says like, no, we're not touching him, then you just hightail it out of there. You don't want to be that casualty. Yeah. Uh, they are going to look to trade in the mid lane, which is, I think, a good decision from G Pride. Oh, here so comes a snowball. They want to jump over onto Chide here. 
will back off though. Turn themselves back onto the tower. Splinter Blast comes out. We'll throw out a bit of harass. They should be able to take this. And the uh, top tower falls though as well for the side of the dire, so. They don't have, okay, they just picked up the six over on the Wyvern drums. Actually gonna get popped. They're looking to grab Chris Brown here. We'll be able to go ahead, land a crush. They'll turn around, oh, but it doesn't matter. They are fast and furious running here. Now Wyvern, Wyvern's in a lot of trouble here. Does have his Q, should be able to Arctic burn his way out of here, get through the trees where Timbersaw cannot reach him. Although, oh, it doesn't matter. And immediately followed up with a big purification, the stun coming out from the Slardar. And of course that uh, Timbersaw, he's just having the time of his life here. He's just going to immediately TP the bottom, see if he can get a kill on the Brewmaster, who's going to just immediately TP out. But this is a Brewmaster who, instead of being able to be comfortable, just look for kills with the split, uh, is forced to just recovery farm as best he can. He's trying to get his Blink Dagger, but you've got a position for Slardar, who's already got his own online. That was the Blink reveal in the mid lane. And double drums online as well. So Ooh, Mogar! Mogar's taking a lot of damage here coming out from Witch Doctor. I think he's probably gonna get taken down with those ticks. Yeah, he's gonna fall. Looks like Witch Doctor now will pay for this though as we get the split and uh, Viper Strike comes out. We get another pause here. Looks like Omni Knight in a little bit of a problem. Yeah, lag on Omni. Omni is most likely dead here. But he does have his Sacred yeah. Relic, so... He has Repel and he has GA. GA will of course get... Uh, purged off by the storm panda but he could repel there's no tp though so yeah i think he i don't know i think he's probably toast here to be quite They're... honest timbersaw is rotating over though so they might look to like try and like keep the omni knight for as lot alive as long as possible and then clean up with the timbersaw afterwards because once mm -hmm. the brew's down the, the split is down and uh the tp is also down for brew and timbersaw should know this so uh, Timbersaw might just clean up on a couple of kills here. Jug will push in the top lane with the spin. That's all he can really do right now, honestly, unless he TPs really, really fast, but I don't think. No, he, he he's I think he just this. keeps farming. Keeps farming, keeps pushing. Yeah, he... But looks like we're he ready to go. To... So the fate of Omni Knight. Omni dies, but I think so too does Brewmaster and Viper. And then pulls out the repel, though. And there's a lot of damage coming out from the Shadow Fiend. We'll force him back. So Omni Knight actually going to make it out alive here. Earth Panda trying to run. Nice curse coming out, though. Omni Knight getting wailed on by his own teammates. Of course, Timbersaw not known for his right click. So maybe not the worst of course. Shadow Fiend doing a lot of damage. It looks like Brewmaster's in a lot of trouble here. Tries to run himself out, but that Timber Chain comes in hot. Takes him down. And now Chris Brown, he's got his eyes over here onto Timber. They needed one more hit, but it looks like, is he going to get the denial? No, it's actually going to get taken down by Chris Brown. That's a monster eight times kill streak. And now Omni Knight, he's really wanting this wyvern throws out the repel tries to buy himself a little bit more time they need shards or something maybe to slow him down it looks like mogar he's looking he doesn't quite have shards up just yet we'll get the walrus punch off could turn around and it looks like sexy man will be able to go ahead pop his ultimate get that kill so they took down the uh, tier two top and then jug went and uh joined the rest of his team seems like it was worth his time for that kill yeah i mean killing the timber cell was absolutely massive there and that was the that was the poison taken from the viper. That was exactly what we talked about during the draft, where, where Timbersaw loves to like kind of live on this like 25% HP threshold. He's darting in and around fights, but just the constant poison tax spam from the viper means that as soon as those reactive stacks start ticking away, and the poison attack is still going, Timbersaw just started taking massive amounts of magic damage, and this kind of uh, super aggro bloodstone into Ags build. Maybe not going to work out too well because he he's not very tanky outside of reactive armor. Looks like they've got their eyes over here on this wyvern. We'll go ahead and uh, try to grab that using the crush. Not going to connect though. No more drum charges left over on Shadow Fiend. Does have a haste rune. We'll actually walk into the Roche pit though. And uh, we do get another pause. So one thing that we forgot to mention really kind of in the draft is they have very little catch on the side of G Pride right now, right? Yeah, this... Stuns on both team are a little lackluster. It's like Tusk for G Pride and uh, Slaughter Stun and a Cask from uh, Team South. But especially coming out from the side of G Pride because you've got a Timber Saw, right? You need ways to kind of like hold him into place, burst him down, and they don't really have that. So, I mean, Blank is just having the time of his life. And again, we talked about this during the draft. I had said that I favored, you know, G Pride's draft a little bit more. But the work that this Timber has been doing, you know, it's turning me into a believer, Forge. 
Yeah, he's done an absolutely great job, and the I, I really think that the draft enabled him to be able to do that, right? You, you see the, the Brewmaster, and you, you just go, okay, we're going to just draft everything around the, the uh, Tim Grissaw, around the Brewmaster, get the Omni Knight as far away from him as possible, get the stuns to kind of interrupt split, and then, oh, they don't really have a whole lot of stuns. Let's just throw a safe lane Timber Saw there. And even without that disconnect, Brewmaster is going to have a very, very tough time. Because, I mean, Whirling Death just just so much against him. And even once he had reconnected, he just had such a tough time just staying in lane. We saw lots of dives behind the tower and insane amounts of burst damage where he just couldn't get it out the primal split even once he had it. Well, we did see that the Roche got taken here. Looks like it was placed over into Shadow Fiend. At the same time, we saw Wyvern taken down by the Slardar and uh, the Witch Doctor. And immediately the ping's coming out saying, I think they have vision there, when they actually don't have the vision. They just were keeping an eye over on the Roche, making sure that uh, they were able to finish that up nice and tidy-like, so. Like Jug is now the bottom lane. top of the net worth, though. He's, he's been top of the net lane for the while, though. Yeah, since that fight where he got the Omni Slash off on Shadowfiend, was it? Can't remember exactly. Or was the uh, Omni? Was the Omni the Omni yeah. But speaking of Omni, they are. He's got Radiance online. They've got Shadowfiend with drums. And... How do you kill this Timber though? Like, you've got to focus on the Shadowfiend who's putting out a ton of damage over onto your tower. Oh, this is that's a good way to take down the Timber. So, all right, still should be able to be alive though. It's not that long of a time for the. Uh, Winter's Curse. While this is going on, though, we do see Jug. He's pushing through. He's going to put some damage, unhealable damage, by the way, to that mid tower. Immediately, Timbersaw coming up. He's not going to be able to cancel out the uh, TP coming from Jug. So I think that did exactly what they needed. Oh, he actually could have stunned there. I don't think they were expecting the TP to be as long as it was. So uh, I don't know where Jug TP to, but they actually could have gotten that stun. That's unfortunate. No oh, boy. Witch Doctor is in for a world of hurt here. Moger. Finds himself a little treat over in the river. Yeah, Spirit Vessel online for him now. So the heals coming up from Witch Doctor are going to be very reduced. I mean, Spirit Vessel as well is going to be very, very effective against this Timber Saw. Just cut through all of that regen. It's like, what, 70% of regen denied or something like that? Yeah, seven, <laughs> reduces HP regen and healing by 70%. So all of that reactive uh, regen is going to be completely negated out. Repel is going to be basically have to be used on. Timber saw every time. So Timber has boots to travel now, and I think he's going to be just hunting Jug as much as he can while pushing out these waves. And he pushes them out really, really quickly. He's still working on that Ags as well, which will give him the double chop. Ah, oh, the double chakram. Can't talk apparently. This morning. Sorry, guys. Uh, and that will make it even more difficult to keep these waves pushed out. Although it looks like Sexy Man will come forward, reveal himself, and try to bait out this Timber Saw because the rest of the team standing behind. And there it is. There's three other people here. Gets to the Timber Chain, but it won't connect. It's stunned out. There's not Chakram, but there's just so much damage. He just goes ahead, uses his Bloodstone, denies himself, doesn't want to uh, give them the satisfaction. But all is going on is space because top lane, we've got Shadow Fiend just wailing away over here onto this tower and uh, still has that Aegis. Yeah, still has Aegis, has the SMY Dragon Lance, has actually the full Hurricane Pike in his uh, stash ready to go so he can get the courier. But the they're gonna the boulder fly. They're gonna have to trade towers here. I mean, Sexy Man's done a great job of keeping these space pushed out. Uh, the net worth advantage might not be massive for him, it's only about 2k lead, but he's cutting down on the overall net worth advantage that Team South has. I'm just constantly pushing out these waves, denying them that five man push that they really want. Because Timber Saw is hitting this peak where he's not really as scary by himself as he was 10 minutes ago. He needs the support of his team to be really that terrifying force. Well, I think once he was ganked bottom, they took the tower and they said, all right, we have an Aegis, but we don't want to go into this without our Timber Saw because they focus on him pretty heavily. And they need to because otherwise, you know, he's whirling around the entire time. They have, don't have anything really great to stun him out of it. Other than, you know, the, uh, the walrus punch and the snowball here. So it looks like they've repelled up the Shadow Fiend, though. I think they might just try to put some damage over onto this tower. Jug is, of course, bottom. 
Uh, and Timbers not has the boots to travel. We'll just force it out and then probably rejoin the team. But they see this opening. There's a big old snowball rolling down mid. And Mogur gonna change his mind back himself out here. And Wyvern is very forward with the Brewmaster. We'll be able to place some vision down. And he's got himself a catch up Midas. He just should be expiring soon though. So this uh this kind of timing pressure from Team South is going to not work out for them. And they've got all these very early game items. As you see, like drums online, two drums, like two sets of drums, and this, the S and Y. These aren't items that scale super well into the late game, right? Like Shadow Fiend's kind of starting to get there now. He's going towards the, the Hurricane Pike. He's moving towards the Butterfly. But we've got Juggernaut on the flip side, who's got Amanda style. He's got the Battle Fury to farm very quickly. He's going to scale much, much harder, much quicker than the Shadow Fiend, who has to kind of replace these items in his inventory. All right, well, they've got the uh, Timber Saw going very forward here. He sees that there's a Jug nearby. They won't be able to cancel out that TP, but we'll reveal that there are quite a few people in this bottom lane, and they actually point, they say, go, push, make them go home, make them return so that way they can't take these objectives. Now, they don't have an Aegis anymore either, so that's a little scary. Do have part of the Butterfly online now over on Chide. And, uh, looks like Timber Saw has found himself a Brewmaster. Again, there's nothing to cancel TPs, though. So this is Even a very scary axe. hero, but... Even with the Ags, he doesn't have the damage. And this is kind of one of the reasons that we don't really see Timber Saw too much anymore. Actually, this action bottom lane. Mm -hmm. Yep, got the camera on it. Looks like Winter Wyvern just barely going to be able to save herself out of here. Uh, do turn themselves around. A little bit of... <laughs> Little bit of ridiculousness coming out from the Brewmaster. So the follow up with the Viper Strike, they throw down that Nether Toxin as well. Snowball rolling in. Looks like Bandy's just gonna be toast here. And the rest of the team gonna back themselves out now. They don't have their Timber, they don't have their Slardar. No reason to stick around when the rest of the team's all there, so. Man, Spear Vessel over on Sexy plus Man Viper is. is... Spear Vessel uh, Viper is just a, a terrifying combo. You don't have Repel up, you basically just die. And they're invading the Radiant Jungle down here. Looks like Mogur is just kind of keeping an eye out. It's getting closer and closer to that Blink Dagger. Jug standing nearby as well. Looks like they want to get the jump over onto... Oh yeah, they're going to snowball and immediately over onto the Omni Knight. Be able to go throw him up into the air. They too have that uh, Radiance and they'll pop the Guardian Angel so he can get out. That was very, very close. About 70 hit points there. Casual taunt coming out from Jug. You think he cares? He DCs. He does not care. But he's about to care right now. Timber Saw coming forward here. Gets the spin. Gonna bash. try to TP himself out. Should be able to get out. Yeah, they, they need the, the bash from Slaughter, but it's only 10% yeah. chance and does not, uh, does not attack super fast as a support. So, they right, won't be able to TP away. And, I mean, For if you'd asked me 10 minutes ago, you actually did ask me 10 minutes ago how many charges I thought this uh, Timber Saw would have. I said 30. He's at 8. He's at so. 8 now, yeah. He's fallen off a little bit. He was looking very, very strong early on, but a couple of these engagements just did not go. And they did a couple really nice ganks on him as well. So realizing that he was a threat, trying to slow him down a little bit. Does pick up that Lotus Orb, though. So it was a very rich Timber Saw still. Uh, not quite as high up as he was early on in the game where he was top net worth. But he's com sitting comfortably at 3. Shadow Fiend, of course, in position 2 here, working on that butterfly, getting very, very close to it. And, of course, Jug, who's just been allowed to really farm and do his own thing, sitting at the top. Smoke comes out from the side of the dire. They're on the hunt. And this is this Ooh. is the change of pace right now. Jug's looking very strong. He's got his items. He's like, okay, now let's go on the offensive with us. Let's us group up. And oh, the smoke objectives. pops. Witch Doctor pops the smoke over here. They place a ward. They spot him out. We'll be able to go ahead and use the Arctic Burn. In comes the Walrus Punch. And it looks like Witch Doctor was trying to throw that cask out. Does manage to throw it right before his death, but... Does not save his life here. And that's Blink Reveal on the Tusk. And it kind of sucks that it's only a kill on the... Uh... Oh, what? And the Radiance. A oh. uh, little bit of uh, maybe... <laughs> BM coming out here. No, I think that was a, a missed chat wheel. Because he was saying he had... Uh, he, had he said go and then he said GG. So I think... Uh... 
think that's just a misclick. Omni needs a pause, though, looks like. So, Timber, right now, if you're here hanging out in the trees, got a big wave kind of coming in towards the top lane right now, and they'll be focusing over onto the uh, mid-tier three here as well, so. This, this feels like a game where every time somebody wants to group up, the other team is just like, all right, I'm just going to push in one of your waves, either like the Timber Saw with double Chakram, Juggernaut with the Battle Fury, and they can, neither team can really get this like kind of five man group up and push that they really want. Well, it feels like they're just getting pick offs. You know, one person, it's there. I feel like we haven't seen a lot of 5v5 action. A lot of times you see, you know, Timbersaw is pushing out a lane by himself because he's got those boots to travel, and then they recognize that on the side of G Pride. So they show up and they try to get a gank off, or, you know, they find out like the, the Omni on the side of South. Viper is by himself and he's just farming. Do you force the TPs back immediately? The uh, Omni Knight will TP directly into that Nether Toxin. Timbersaw coming forward, throws out double Chakram, which does quite a bit of damage here, but maybe not enough. Nice stomp coming out though, but it doesn't matter. The split comes out, repelling out the uh, Slider here, will be able to move himself away. Gonna throw the Omni Knight up into the air. Try to get as much damage over onto this tower as possible. Jug just hitting all these buildings. Will go for the spin TP, get himself out. Should be able to make it no problem here. Viper as well. They know that they just don't have anything to stop them. Yeah. Maybe and the cast, but... What, what's happening here? TP. Brewmaster? He got his TP cancelled by... Brewmaster <laughs> just running face first into the well. <laughs> Trying to at the very least. Oh my god. Which, which panda was it that he returned to? They probably he probably it's, they probably it's always the, the, uh, the Earth Panda. Yeah, but if they kill the Earth Panda, he was probably trying to bait them into following, or he was hoping he was probably running away with the Wind Panda and hoping that they would kill the Earth Panda before he respawned, because the Earth Panda is pretty running it to Fountain, hoping it would last long enough that he could get to Fountain and die, and then he would respawn at the Wind Panda. Uh, mm, they know they know they're in the pit right now. They have to be in the pit because they took that uh, that mid barracks and they. Wyvern can get a. Oh, she doesn't have the Winter's Curse up. They're gonna have to let this go. Oh no, she Viper! Doesn't... Viper's getting a ton of damage. They use the Witch Doctor ulti over on them. Bottom lane though looks like Jug gonna try to do his best. Takes out that bottom tower, making his way towards the uh, base, and immediately they TP home. He's got no spin the TP Slardar. though. Who just, oh my gosh. All right, they're just running around in the woods here. It looks like immediately Brewmaster coming forward. He wants to grab the timber, but they don't have anything to stop him here. They don't have a Yules. They don't have, you know, they have the Winter's Curse, but Wyvern, again, mobility is a huge issue with this hero. Just was not able to get in close enough for that. Not having the uh, Shadow Fiend there for that fight was, was really rough because he's the main damage dealer that can actually like hurt the juggernaut right he just spins hits the barracks and there's literally nothing the timber saw can do his right click damage is laughable it's all about the double chakram so not being able to join that fight was really, really chris rough. brown chris brown here in the top lane he's gonna just tp himself out again the lack of stuns is really really showing in this game as there's been so many times where somebody just tps away I, I wonder if it's almost worth it to like pick up like a yules or something just to cancel out think, tps at the very very least i think a yules for like the supports and definitely a scythe for the timbers or yeah. the omni knight even i would love to see an omni knight grab a scythe because they just need some way to lock down the jug right stop this you, you run up you stop the spin before it comes out you follow up with the cast you follow up with the blink crush they just need some way to just mess with the juggernaut really Ping's coming out here. They do realize that Tusk is standing nearby because they have a ward placed over on the river. We'll just back himself out. I don't know. Oh, it looks like... Oh, Timber saw. He knows he's there. We'll try to jump over immediately. The blink coming out, though, from Mogur. We'll try to juke himself around here into the trees, throw out the shards, maybe trying to do a little bit of misdirection as they move their way over towards into the base now. There's the Shadow Fiend. Just wailing away on this tower. They've got that Lotus Orb over on the Timber Saw as well. They jump forward, do get a uh, crush over onto the Brewmaster. Will back themselves out. Glimmer Cape gonna buy a little bit more time. But during all of this, again, we see that the Jug 
bottom lane, just uh, trying to make as much space as possible. They'll turn around again. Timbersaw, he's just taking a lot of damage here. We'll be able to take down the Tusk. Not quite dead yet. Still has that Aegis as well. That was a lot of spells that they had to use to try to take this guy down. They'll turn around again. Jug coming forward. That Timber Chain, though, gonna buy him some more time. They chase after the uh, Slarder. They get the kill over there, and it looks like Blank's gonna be able to make it out. This Nethertoxin for Mifer is doing so much work because as long as he gets it off early enough on this timber saw, and the timber the timber chain is on cooldown, you don't get any more reactive stacks. Like he, you can you keep the ones you already have, but you can't build up anymore. So just you know, constantly spamming out these Nether Toxins means that timber saw isn't as tanky as he normally feels like he should be. Combine that with the Spirit Vessel that's coming out from this Tusk, and this timber feels inc incredibly squishy. I really like what Jug is doing here. Every time they try to go for a push coming out from Team South, he's in a different lane. He's pushed out quite a bit, and he's putting damage into the towers because, you know, that's two Roches that they've taken on the side of South, and they haven't been able to crack high ground over here, really. You know, we've got the uh, Tier 3 and part of the racks in mid already taken down. Jug also, you know, doing his split pushing, got yet another tower into the Radiant space. Yeah, the, the the answer from Team South is that like they want to try and do their own split push, but Jug just does it so much faster because their split push comes from spells, and his is just like I attack super fast and have a battle fury. Come at Looks me. like they're gonna lose the tusk over into the jungle, and uh, Wyvern trying to buy himself a little bit of time here. Will go ahead try to heal himself, and that's uh, an ulti getting thrown out here. It might have been better the other way around. I don't think Tiversa does quite that much right click damage to the Shadow Fiend as opposed to vice versa here. And they will roll themselves back around. They do have the Glimmer Cape over on the Slardar. Looks like Moger and Chris Brown gonna be able to walk away from this. And look at Jug. He's already he sees. All right, I'm gonna go right back into the space. I'm gonna go after another Rax here. Just give yep. them the whole run around. And, and that was the big thing, right? They, they were like, all right, we're going to stop the jug. We're going to get this great team fight. But... <laughs> Witch Doctor has to be careful. Witch Doctor can just get ripped apart by this jug if he wants to. Look at this. That's going to be the big chunk of damage coming out over onto this Rax. And he just TPs out. And there's nothing that they can do about it. They don't have those stuns. Yeah. I mean, Sexy Man is playing just... An incredibly good split push game. Like if he gets beat with the travel, I don't know how they really deal with it because their their best answer is Timber side with boots of travel and like the Shadow Fiend who's swing Shadow Fiend still has treads actually. So their best answer is a Timber saw, but Timber can't kill Jug. Jug might not be able to really do too much against Timber either, but he can't he can't stop the split push. Okay, so this is big. It. This is big. We've got the Basher up and running now on Jug, and he's headed towards that Abyssal Blade. So, speaking of Lockdown, Forge, looks like G-Pride's going to have a little bit more in their corner very, very soon. And I don't think you even pay attention to the Timber Saw in the beginning. I think you just go right for the Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend, Omni Knight, one of those guys. And well, if you get the Panda split like off, you can just throw the Omni Knight up in the air. You don't have to worry about him at that time. And you just burst down the, uh, the Shadow Fiend. That's most of their... Major physical damage. Moger actually in a little bit of trouble here, trying to run himself away. We'll go ahead and use the snowball, but the snowball's gonna bounce back over onto him with that Lotus Orb. <laughs> run, Moger. Oh, but the Scotty oh, has completed over onto wow, Chide. They'll throw out the chakra and put some damage over onto Chris Brown. But uh, will Viper strike himself? This Lotus Orb does so much damage. Heal comes out from the Omni Knight, followed up with a repel. Top lane. Top lane's getting pushed in again. Like, yup, that is that is how Sexy Man has been playing this game the entire time. And again, they don't have any way to cancel out his TPs. He's been spin TPing, but honestly, he doesn't even really need to spin when he's dealing with the uh, the Timber Saw over here. And we do see another person taken down. They're trying to put as much damage as they can over onto the Shadow Fiend. No way to cancel that TP. Same thing coming out here. They'll try to use the ultimate on the Jug, but what can they do? He wanted to bash. What he can wanted to bash do? off that. Well, it's I mean, like the Slardar, too. You're hoping that maybe you get a bash, but it's not guaranteed. You need something that's a guaranteed stun or lockdown. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is that you would think, all right, Jug is really the only one that can push out waves, <laughs> but he, he, he pushes them out so quickly because of this butterfly and this Manta style that, like, you have a Timber Saw who's, like, desperately trying to get waves pushed in. You have Shadow Fiend that's running around spamming down waves, but that's two lanes, and... For every two lanes you push in, Jug's happy just pushing in the other one. And now with this Rax down, there's the mid that's constantly getting shoved in. 
I mean, Sexy Man is playing this map expertly. This is big. He's completed his Abyssal. He does not have buyback, though. So if they can get a pickoff over onto Sexy Man, that might be exactly what South needs to try to break this high ground. Do you find themselves a panda? He'll go ahead. He'll use the split. And uh, I think he's just dead here, though. Might have been they a bit of a miscalculation. Oh. Yeah. Because okay. now split's down for... Uh, 89 seconds. Granted, waves are just constantly being pushed in, though. They do have their own answer to the jug pushing out the waves with this timber with the uh, double chakram, but... I don't know. I think that might have been I a mean, panic timber. ulti. I think it was maybe a miscommunication thinking, all right, I, I have my juggernaut here. You know, maybe we go for a kill, but jug didn't have omni. He didn't have a TP ready. And like you said, he doesn't have buyback, so he's a little bit nervous. He's going to play a little bit more cautiously than he already has, been, which he's already been playing very cautious. But right now, very vulnerable. Still about a thousand gold away from the uh, buyback. And now the, the lanes are finally pushed in for Team South. They can finally get their five on five. Now they have to face the fully slick side of Juggernaut. Oh, did you see that big hit coming out? Timbersaw, he's in it to win it, though. He does turn himself around, finds himself a Wyvern, takes him down before he can do anything else here. Snowball coming out. Will bounce back, though, with his Timbersaw. Oh, my gosh. Did he repel? How did he get out of that spell? So and there's a jump forward coming out from Starter. They want to just try to put as much damage over onto this tower as possible. They know that Wyvern's down. Uh, Brewmaster's still down for another couple seconds, but I think they might want to reset here. I mean, the they, Wyvern they being down have, is a big deal, though. They don't have to worry about the ulti. They don't have an option to reset. They have to take these fights. Walrus right Punch going right in there, followed up with the Guardian Angel, though. Get the Viper Strike out, but again, Blank just runs and he doesn't seem to care. He's taking a lot of damage, though. He needs to be careful. They don't have an Aegis on him right now. And Sexy Man, he's in the thick of everything here. They've got their eyes over onto the Switch Doctor. We'll be able to get the kill. They get the kill over onto the Slardar as well. Timber coming around. There's a big ulti coming out from the Shadow Fiend. They've got their eyes over on this Earth Panda and uh, Omni Knight running for his life. They do get the deny off over onto Timber. There's a gem over onto the ground. Double kill over onto Chide as he takes down Chris Brown as well. But that was a very costly fight for the uh, side of Team South right now. They're just not able to really comfortably take this high ground. You know, they've got two Aegises behind them now. And they didn't get much damage down. They went in this time without an Aegis uh, because the Wyvern was out. And they didn't have to worry about that ultimate, but. I mean, the, the fact is that Juggernaut's been running around this map getting absolutely massive, dodging all these fights. But now, like, he's been sending top net with for a oh, while. Oh, the Roche! Right Perfect awesome. timing. And this is Refresher Shard, too. So that's, that's you know, big. double Winter's Curse, double Omni Slash. He's got the plus five Omni Slash talent. So. I mean, double Omni Slash could be huge. You've got double Split. There's a lot of really good things that this Refresher Shard can do for G Pride. All right, Aegis and Refresher Shard gets picked up by Sexy Man. There's still cheese, I think, on the ground. Looks like uh, Tusk is going to be the one to pick it up. I'm curious if he holds on to this Refresher Shard because, like, in the in the Roche Pit, right? You're like, all right, just grab whatever, and as long as you know. Jack gets the Aegis, doesn't matter. But it looks I guess the problem with the Refresher Orb going onto the Winter Wyvern is just she hasn't been able to really get great positioning in a lot of these fights right now. So if you have the yeah. Refresher Orb but you die, or Shard rather, it doesn't do your team any good. Yeah. So I don't jug. know if they're going to want to hold on to it. Again, the, you, keeping it on the Jug, being able to have that extra Omni Slash, maybe even you know putting it onto Viper, who's fairly tanky. He actually is the one who gets the cheese as he works on that MKB. Um, to have yeah. both Viper Strikes wouldn't be awful. They're Refresher Shard give giving to Panda, though. And already yeah, we've got a big fight breaking out over here. It looks like, oh man, Tusk gonna get immediately obliterated. Which Dr. Ulti gets used. There's the Winter's Curse coming out. Winter Wyvern gonna get taken down. And it's just Omni Knight beating away over onto this Timber Saw. Drums okay. get popped. They're gonna jump forward. That's a big Omni Slash coming out, though. Use the Panda Split as well. Try to uh, get some space here. And they'll use the Requiem Souls. Turn around Sexy Man. They pop that Aegis. This is looking really scary. I don't think he's gonna be able to get himself out. Yeah, look at the double chakrams come out immediately. They know that he's a problem. The spin comes out. Lots of slow coming out here from the Scotty. Lots of damage as well as they chase after him. He's not going to be able to make it to well. He's going to get taken down. Tries to man to dodge it, but it's gone godlike. Yep, right. Fresher Shard coming out now from the Brewmaster. He's going to be able to get another split He's off if no he waves. feels like he needs it. We'll be able to chase after Slidar over here as he runs himself out and runs himself directly. Oh, it doesn't matter. He pops a BKB and he'll go for the split coming out, but they're just shredding him left and right. The Shadow Fiend has arrived. He's got so much damage. Again, double kill. Chasing after Sexy Man as he tries to run himself back over into his world of safety. The only problem with this whole thing is that they have no waves. So they they have a, they took an amazing fight here, but they just need to quickly push out these waves and get everything back. 
the cooldowns are going to be online. The rest of the team is going to be alive. They use the. the they already use the second split on the Brewmaster. He doesn't have another split right now. Winter's Curse is going to be up soon, though. Tusk is online. Viper got absolutely pleaded. He still has cheese. So this is oh, Wyvern's going to get taken down in the base. Oh. Jump forward immediately over onto Sex Man. They know if they can take him down. This might be a game here. We'll chase after. Lots of damage coming out. Again, Shadow Fiend. He's just gotten so big. He's got that MKB. He's got the Scotty. They'll be able to take him down, though, finally. Turn around. Omni Knight. He's got the Guardian Angel. He's got the Rappel on him as well. He's just chasing after Chris Brown, trying to make a little bit more space here. Shadow Fiend. He comes back. Buys back, in fact. Wants to get this game over with get this kill they finally crack the high ground they want this done and over moger will get taken down look at timberside just runs into the well we'll be able to throw out the chain and dodging around with this viper just doesn't want them there anyway somni is sitting so very very low and again timber just throwing out chakrams and the damage follow-up from Chide is just too strong that's four heroes on the side of g pride that are taken down here viper still alive but i don't think he can really do too too much Throws out some Nether Toxin, hoping a proc might be able to take down this Omni Knight with the Milner. And now he's got to run himself away. There's the Hurricane Pike, though, coming out from Tide. They go ahead, they use that cloak, trying to get him back into the base. Wyvern is up, but this is going to be Megas. Yeah, this is going to be Megas. And, like, they can kind of deal with Megas. They've got the Radiance and the Omni Knight. They've got the Battle Fury from the Chug. But, I mean, both of those are going to be down for their minute. And Looks I like they want to just finish it. Yeah, I mean, Shadow Fiend got back because he wants to just end this game. Of course, coming out, Wyvern doesn't even manage to get that heal off. Not that it would have saved her anyways with the raise damage coming out from Shadow Fiend, but... Yeah, and there's the GG call. GG, Man. first game of the series going over to the side of Team South with a very, uh, very eclectic draft here. I like it. They recognized that G-Pride didn't have much for stuns and lockdown, and they made that timber saw just do so much damage in the beginning. A lot of work putting in there, lots of space. And unfortunately for G-Pride, especially with that early disconnect coming out with the Brewmaster, uh, they just weren't able to clinch it out. But we will be back with game number two, guys, so stick around.